I started my minimalism journey when the real quarantine began. I started binge watching videos on minimalism and got really inspired and started tossing anything that don't spark joy. Let me share to you some habits I developed along the way. We live in a society that defines success depending on how busy we are or how many tasks we accomplished in a day. Minimalism teaches us to take it slow. Life is not a race on who finished the most tasks or, or earned the most money. It is always good to take a break from our busy routines and breathe and enjoy life's simple pleasures. Even when I was not a minimalist, it was my habit to put things back where they belong after using them. Now that I am a minimalist, I still live up to that habit. You know, clutter attracts clutter. So if I allow myself to be lazy, I would eventually find myself living in a pig's town. Since I became a minimalist, I have the constant urge to prune my belongings. It has become part of my everyday life. Becoming a minimalist doesn't mean you do all the decluttering today and you're done. It simply doesn't work that way. It is a habit. What maybe is important to you today may not bring much of a value to you next month. Thus, they become candidates for decluttering. It is a common misconception that having more things around makes life a lot happier. I used to have a home where every drawer, every shelf, and every wall is filled with things. The more, the merrier. Minimalism changed that way of thinking. I've grown to love empty spaces. They don't make me feel empty or lacking. Instead, they make me feel so relaxed and make me focus on what I'm doing without any distractions. I sell or donate whatever I declutter. I never think twice. I take some time taking photos of them and post them online. Less clutter, more money. You have heard of this perhaps. When one new item comes in the house, one has to go. Recently, my husband bought a bicycle for her daughter. Since she is already too big for this toy car, we are letting it go. So another kid might enjoy it too. We have our own individual standards for minimalism. Sometimes we tend to compare how much others have decluttered and try to keep up. This is not a competition on who decluttered the most or who has the least number of kilos. This is a lifestyle we adopt according to our individual needs. We live in a world that tells us to equip ourselves with the latest trends like gadgets and fashion. As a result, we never become satisfied with what we own. We always want to upgrade to the newer version or the better version. Minimalism teaches us to be grateful for the things we own.
I used to be an impulsive buyer, but when I adopted minimalism in my life, everything changed. When I was still working as a teacher, every time I get my salary, I would run to the mall and buy myself something, a pair of shoes, a bag, or a dress. Then I would tell myself I deserve it for all the hard work and stress I've been through with my work. It turned out I was only adding more stress to my life. Lesson learned? Never buy something out of emotions. I've been recently eyeing on a very pretty cooking pot. It is quite pricey. I have kept a picture of it for three weeks now. I realized my appetite for this pot was lost after three weeks. I don't want to buy it anymore. I actually don't need it and that my pot is still in very good shape. I give myself enough time to consider the purchase so I won't have to regret it in the future. You know, before you purchase something, always ask yourself these questions. Do I need it? Will it make my life better? I never go to the grocery store without a list. I make sure all necessities are listed and I follow it strictly. My husband is pretty handy in making shelves. He used scrap woods to make these shelves. Saved me a lot of money. I chose to spend a good amount of money for this dresser rather than their cheaper plastic alternatives. I choose to invest in eco-friendly and high-quality products. This dresser's lure can serve me for a good number of years. Say no to freebies, souvenirs, and hand-me-down clothes if you know you won't use them anyway and will just add clutter to your home. You are not obliged to receive everything that is given to you for free. Just because it's free doesn't mean you have to take it. Just say no politely and thank them for the gesture. Before becoming a minimalist, I was a Korean drama addict. I would have marathons for hours. I would also spend hours of Facebooking, looking into people's lives, reading rants and complaints. Until I realized these two hobbies are emotionally draining me and stealing my time from my family. I was no longer entertaining myself. Instead, I was distracting myself and destroying my peace of mind. When it comes to my skincare routine, I make it simple. I just do the basics, facial wash, toner, then moisturizer. I used to have complicated skincare routine that takes too much of my time, and I have a hard time keeping up to it. When it comes to outdoor clothes, I keep it simple too. I dress for comfort, but for fashion. I love traveling. 
I'd rather invest my money in experiences that would be forever remembered by my kids rather than things they will outgrow. So there you have it, the 15 habits I've learned in being a minimalist. I'm sure I will be learning more along the way. After all, minimalism is a journey, not a destination.